since they were Hispanic and a lot of them didn't speak English, they couldn't read the forms right. The translators would like just say, oh, just sign here. At the end, they ended up tying their tubes without them knowing. And there was like this huge uh, lawsuit. This is the True Hustle Podcast with your host, JR. This is the True Hustle Podcast with your host, JR. Hi, Alexis Negrete. <laughs> Hi, What's Junior. up? How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm great. Everything's amazing. Amazing. That's fucking dope. The best it could be. <laughs> yes. So, I'm sure this question, I, I'm sure that a, a lot of people have this question. And it's something that, you know, I've known you, but I've, yeah. I've never asked you. But it's like, how do you become like a fashion influencer? Because I'm sure growing up, you weren't like, oh, you were like five saying, yeah. I want to be an influencer. I like, wanted to be originally like a when I was little, um, cure cancer and, you know, like yeah. be a doctor, um, study like chemo and all of that, you know, uh -huh. um, oncology. But I don't know. It was just crazy how it happened. I mean, I'm the only girl of four brothers. So growing up with four brothers was hard, Dang like me. really hard, you know? <laughs> um, oh my. I mean, I was like playing in the mud with them on rainy days with, worms and all this stuff but at the same time i was always still that girly girl because i was like the princess of the house you know so i've always been like girly like that. i've always been into fashion especially growing up like middle school high school started getting more into fashion and then when i was 16 i believe yeah i was 16 i got a job at the mall it was my first job 16 years old working at a fashion boutique so that kind of sparked my like love for fashion more every weekend all my paychecks at this point 16 years old you don't have no bills just your anything you want you know so off all, clothes off yeah <laughs> so my entire paycheck was literally i would get my paycheck and then spend it on clothes from the boutique i worked at or anything i wanted you know so um I was just racking up clothes and clothes and clothes. Oh, shit. And I don't know. I just started taking pictures of my clothes. It Well, in my clothes. Posting them. And people liked it. People started liking my pictures. And then I remember this one time I posted some jeans that I had, like, bought from Fashion Nova. And I did my little picture. At, I was working at the mall and on my breaks or anything, I would tell my course, come <laughs> take me a picture outside of the mall. Like there's at the West Covina mall, there's this okay. like wall outside kind of by where Red Robin is at. I took the picture there and that picture kind of went like viral at the time. Like for me, um, it got like over 10,000 likes. And for me, I didn't have no followers. So that was huge to me. And then Fashion Nova reposted it. And then I feel like that's where it kind of like bloomed into something that I didn't expect or like ever thought it would be. Um, and then I started getting smaller boutiques calling me to either model for them or um like just they would send me clothes to promote no for way. them yeah so it's like that one post yeah you know how they always say like you're one post away yeah that, so that's From true like going, yeah basically oh, <laughs> well that's what shit. happened to me i mean i would still post naturally like all my pictures um of fashion and stuff like i would post i would buy clothes and then post them post the outfits in them so that's what i would always recommend to people because people i would used to go on lives on instagram a lot and people would always ask me like hey like how did you start i want to start like what do you recommend you know so then i would tell them just honestly invest in yourself and buy clothes yourself that you normally already wear and then just start posting them tagging the companies and they're eventually going to reach out to you then that's what i'm doing now yeah. I don't know if you noticed all my episodes. I have like an America. <laughs> I have like like LA. I be yeah. sending it to them like boost, repost that shit. Like I be like, Repping I be rocking up. nothing but like LA stuff. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I'm Mexican, so I, yeah. I like America. So I don't know. It might happen. Yeah, might I mean, even like, now till now, I still do it. Like it doesn't have to be with fashion. It could be with anything. Like anything you buy from target anything you buy from any store just tag the actual brand that it is and eventually you're gonna get collabs or they're gonna send you stuff to try out you know because they see like you really enjoy their products you know? so it doesn't have to be like high-end people think that yeah. oh it has to be 
Louis Vuitton. It has to be Gucci. Like, it could just be anything, right? Yeah, literally anything. Like Febreze. You can literally buy a Febreze <laughs> and post Febreze. This new scent is the bomb, you know? And Man. you never know. You could get a collab from mm. Febreze. I don't, I'm thinking now because I don't know if you noticed when you walked in, that smell. Yeah. It smelled like fresh. I have the same scents that I buy from... Bath and Body Works? Yes. Yeah, they're bomb. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm, Alexis is giving me some ideas. I'm yeah. fucking be like, oh, look, this is what True Hustle smells yeah. like. <laughs> I don't know. They might repost it. Yeah. Crazy. So you graduated from Cal State LA. Yeah. Golden Eagles. Me yeah. too. Uh. No way. Yeah. Really? I'm but way what older. Was your, what was your I'm major? Way older. <laughs> what was your major? My major was sociology and criminal justice. See, and you ended up in something else. I ended up in something completely, something yeah. different. So, you graduated. What made you go this route instead of, okay, well, let's back it up. What did you get your degree in? Okay, so I got my degree in public health um, and a minor in Chicano Latino studies. Um, so... Event well, going into college, I didn't want to do public health. My main thing was nursing. I wanted to do nursing. But public health is the backup for nursing at, at Cal State LA. Um, mm -hmm. So if you don't, like, get into nursing, you go into public health. And for me, like, I really wanted to do nursing, but it was just so impacted and so hard that I kind of was just like, mm, I'm going to take the easy way and just do public health because I already did all the... Mm. under what is it called the, the undergrad undergrad for public health um so yeah i feel like i just didn't push myself hard enough and i should have um but i wanted to do nursing but focus on like women's reproductive health like obgyn things like that mm. um but yeah eventually i just stuck with public health i finished public health and Public health is honestly really boring. <laughs> but I mean, I did it. it what kind of sounds like it is? <laughs> <laughs> well, public health is basically studying um, like the health of the community as a whole. A doctor or nurse is the individual studying the health of like an individual. Public health is like the whole community. So it's kind of like what we had with COVID. Everything while I was in school, everything we were relating to COVID because um, it's like you're studying the health of the whole community because it's a pandemic, you know? You're not just studying one person. Okay. Um, so it's that like, um, do you know what epidemiology is? Uh, no. It okay. sounds, <laughs> sounds complicated, <laughs> so but I don't know. Yeah, what is epidemiology <laughs> falls under public health, and basically it's like um, you're trying to figure out where this disease came from, you know? Like, okay, so all these people in this section have it, where did they get it from, you know? Mm. So that's basically public health. You're trying to figure out and trying to set these rules and regulations to control the pandemic from spreading further. And so that's what it was. And yeah, it, like I did like it, but it would get boring to me because it was just too much like knowledge kind of. It was just maybe too much information. And yeah. I think when it's a lot, well, for me, I get puzzled. Like I'm yeah. like, oh, you wait, like this is like yeah. this is a lot, like overload. Yeah. So it was a lot, um, but yeah, from public health. I mean, I graduated. I did. I also got my minors in Chicano studies. Um, what? What? Yeah. <laughs> After getting my bachelor's, well, actually, towards the end of getting my bachelor's, this is when my, all my Instagram was already popping and everything, you know. So to me, it was like, oh, I don't even have to work, you know. I don't have to. <laughs> Because I was getting money. <laughs> I was getting money from Instagram, you know? Oh, so not Instagram itself, but from these collaborations and everything and modeling. Work. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I'm sorry. Um, so, yeah, I was just, I was that wasn't my main priority mm -hmm. anymore at the end of um, college. I just really wanted to finish to get it over with so I can 100 percent focus on like getting my. No, not getting my degree. I already have my degree. You already have Focus it. on um, just Instagram, like fully going all in. Dang. And so that happened. I didn't end up doing, I wanted to do my master's, but in kinesiology. Um, Whoa. What is that? So kinesiology is like kind of like athletic training, personal okay. trainers, okay. massage therapists, things like that. 
Okay. So you're still studying like health and stuff, but it's more sports health. Okay, cool. Yeah, so like well, that sounds like fun. Yeah, if I were to get like a master's in kinesiology, I could work for the Dodgers and be an athletic trainer or a massage therapist or something. You know, like no I way. could go big in like work with these bigger athletes you know um so i wanted to do that after but that's in the whole process when we were getting the house and everything and yeah it was just like oh so this is like super recent yeah yeah so i graduated 2021 from cal Cidale. oh thank you for making me feel uh fucking old <laughs> so, <laughs> all right for the record i graduated in 2006 that was before cal Cidale had the I think they had just built that forensics building. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Cal State LA doesn't look like the Cal State LA that I graduated that from. Now yeah. it's like a... R- but now, do you, <coughs> do, do you get this feeling that when you pass by Cal State LA, you're just like, oh, like, I remember. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I used to get caught off the Ramona exit yeah. and the traffic. and. I used yeah. to take the train. Oh, shit. Yeah. No way. Yeah, I didn't because, know. I mean, it was only 15 minutes away from my house. And I remember my mom would drop me off at the train station. Sometimes I wouldn't even make it to the train station. And, and the train would leave and she would have to take me all mad. <laughs> that you know, I missed this? The train. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, ves por no levantarte. <laughs> but yeah, I would have to take the train and then take the train back. Mm-hmm. But it was cool. I liked it. Me too. It went by quick for me, though. I guys, I was in and out. Boom. Like a year and a half. A year and a half. Like, I got my AA degree um, from East LA College. Mm-hmm. Then it, it took me, like, a year and a half, I think, to... I was 21. I had everything done already. Yeah, I went It took me five quick. years. Oh, shit. Yeah. Well, but it got done. Yeah. Did, did your parents tell you, like, you went to school? Fuiste a la escuela. Yeah. ¿Cómo no vas a...? Agarrar tu carrera. Did they try to be like, nah, don't do this. Don't do this social media stuff. Um, honestly, they didn't just because I feel like they even saw like what I was doing and like that it was bringing me like um, a good income. Um, but at the end of the day, my parents are always just going to be like, whatever is for you, whatever makes you happy. You know, they're not really going to like push so much on me. I mean, same thing with my brothers. They all got their bachelors and they're not working in what they got their bachelor's for you know so it's like we're all kind of like oops but i mean we do have our diplomas at the end of the day <laughs> well i'm guilty of the same thing yeah yeah i got my master's i feel too, like a I lot feel- of people are like that too like they go to school and they end up doing something totally different because at the end of the day you don't really know what you like until you're actually doing it you know mm-hmm. like i could have done nursing and then i could have been doing nursing and at the end of the day what is like it's not for me you know you probably wouldn't have enjoyed it. Yeah. Because it takes a special individual yeah. to do, like... Because it, it's you know, a lot. Like it's, it's, it's demanding. It's a lot. Like, you know, and it's like, if you don't really enjoy it, that's what Sabrina says. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't enjoy that, then you're going to have a hard time. Yeah. So, maybe... And it, then, another thing, too, is I just got into tattooing, like, um, permanent makeup. Which is oh, something, shit. yeah, it's something that I never thought I would be into. So I do permanent makeup now and I enjoy it. I didn't know I would enjoy it because I remember when I had told Ryan, like, I want to do this. He's like, no, you're not. You're not going to do it. And I'm like, yeah, I am. <laughs> Watch me. I am going to do it. And he's like, okay, don't just do it to do it and not like continue on, you know, only do it if you're really going to put your all into it. And that for me was like, I'm going to do it, you know? Okay, that's just interesting, right? Because my mom's <laughs> like, "Ay, me voy a tatuar las cejas." Yeah. Right? Is that like? I've never asked her. Like, is that like a real, like, with a real tattoo? Tattoo gun, yeah. But it's I different. I was today, today years old. Or like- <laughs> it's just different ink. Yeah, it's different ink. So um, the tattoo ink is more permanent. Permanent. The ink that I use for to do like the brows is still c- kind of permanent, but not as. Like if you're getting a, Not like that. a black ink tattoo. Yeah. Yeah. So it fades with time. No Within three to five years. Oh, yeah. There's also lip blush tattoos, eyeliner tattoos. I'm, But it's not like it was what? before. Okay, wait, wait. <coughs> Back up. People tattoo. Their lips. 
But it's called okay. lip blushing. So it's not necessarily like those old chola t- okay. eyebrows. It's, That's it's exactly different. what I was no, picturing. No, no, I'm it's like, different now. Okay. Yeah. So lip blush, you can like neutralize the lips. Let's say if your lips are um like very pigmented and like dark, mm-hmm. you can neutralize and make it more like a blush color, like more pink. Yeah, to make it look like natural. And all you would need to do is like put lip gloss on and you're good to go. Wow. Yeah. And the eyebrows, same thing. You wake up, you're good to go. You're we wake up with eyebrows. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Back to the eyebrows. Just curious. It's a real tattoo gun, like, yes. Yes. like his tattoo gun. Like he just said, "Here, babe." Yeah. Okay. So when I it. when I was learning, he brought me his tattoo gun. He said, "Practice with this." We were practicing on a damn lemon. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. And a banana. And a banana, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Well, I mean, you would figure that if my mom would be like, no, me voy a tatar la ceja. But I was like, it's not like a tattoo. Yeah, it's a tattoo. But I guess it is a tattoo. Yeah. But like I'm I just... said, it's not as permanent as like a regular black ink tattoo. Um, it does fade within like three to five years. But some people, let's say if they're very heavy handed and they messed up someone's brows, like, there's a chance it won't fade if they went too deep in the skin. But I mean, if your pressure is good and everything's good, um, they're going to fade within like three to five years. But that's the luxury of it. Hmm. If you think about it, that's really the luxury of it fading. Like you don't want it to be completely permanent forever. Because what if someone did mess up your brows? Oh, shit. You know, and do you have to like go to school for that? Or something um, that you just taught like yourself. A, um, you have to get a certificate for it. And then you have to be like registered from the LA County or wherever, whatever county you're working for, like under. Um, mm-hmm. You have to get your your body art license from the county. Oh, so you're legit, legit. Yeah. And, and what's your business called? Avanti Artistry. Say it again. Avanti Artistry. So Avanti, yeah. So Avanti actually means I looked it up on um, because I wanted something meaningful for like to be the name of like my new business. Avanti means to move forward. I believe in Italian. Find out. It sounds Italian. Yeah, Avanti. Avanti. That's dope. So that's what I liked about it, Avanti Artistry, like to move forward. It, it, that's me moving forward into something that I never thought I'd be doing. What would you do if... Uh, so now I'm going to take Ryan's job. Damn, that's right. I'm going to take over. <laughs> it's, a, it's an ancient battle cry. Forward. Yeah, move forward. So what would you do if tomorrow you get a DM from Carol G <laughs> to do her eyebrows? <laughs> talk to talk to talk to me about this. You're like Carol G's number one fan. Like you really <laughs> like, like it's it's crazy. Like this shit's like you're like super yeah. Carol G, right? Yeah. It's like <laughs> what somebody for like uh, Taylor Swift will be a Swifty. You're just uh, I don't know. Oh, oh, they have a name? Yeah. Oh, Los shit. de Siempre, actually. Los, Los de, de siempre? siempre? Yeah, that's like her fan base. Um, like how? How did that Los come about? Siempre. Like, you just really love her I music? I just really love Carol G. Yeah. I like, I love her. To the point where I be having dreams about this girl. It's so oh, weird. Shit. And even <laughs> Ryan knows. And sometimes I, t- I wake him up. Oh, my God. I just had a dream with Carol G. And he's like, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's well, I'm sure you've seen her like SNL. Yeah, yeah. she's she seems pretty cool. Yeah, she's so amazing. it would be like a dream come true for her to hit you up. Yeah, so I you feel like if I were to meet her, I would not know what to do. I would probably pee my pants. <laughs> ah, shit! Like out of shock. Yeah. I hope you don't when you do <laughs> meet her, and she probably will see this clip because we're gonna have to <laughs> cut this up, and I'm gonna send it to her. Like Carol G was so uh, girl. Get out of yeah. Lexus. <laughs> I know, but at her concerts, I'm always like, s- something makes me cry at her concerts, tear up, like really? a song or something. Just or just even knowing that I'm there, like I get like, like emotional, like happy, you know. 
Oh, and we went to the Anuel concert. I was crying at the Anuel concert because I was sad for Carol G. Why? I mean, not necessarily because they broke up or anything, but just like the love they had or they shared, like it made me emotional because they were already like broken up and he was singing some songs like of when they were together. And it just made me emotional for her, if that makes sense. Wow, that's yeah. deep. I didn't even know they were together. No, they. I'm just they're, like, <laughs> they're not together anymore. I just found out. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know they were together and then broken up. Like I just found that out. <laughs> so it's yeah. like you feel like an attachment to her, like. Yeah. But I think it's because Weird, she built that community, right? Yeah. And like her, her music touches a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Like her story's crazy. Huh? Like I seen. Uh, I guess there was she participated in one of those uh, singing. Uh, in those in was it like American Idol but like in Colombia yeah um, and then well, they told her like no well oh you know better than <laughs> so yeah no but I mean she was told no a lot of times but she still kept going I mean with her dad her dad is like really has really helped her a lot um, too but he's pushed her a lot even when she wanted to stop music because she did want to stop music and then she took a trip to like New York or something. Mm -hmm. And like, she had already told her dad, like I quit, like, I don't want to do this. And then she was in New York and she kind of got back into it on her own without her family telling her like, this is what you're going to do. You know, that's crazy. Yeah. So I hope, uh, and it's so crazy how big she's gotten like over time, because I remember at the time where when I started listening to her, like no one really knew who she was or anything. And then she started blowing up and blowing up. Now everywhere I see Kara G this, Kara G that, Kara G, you know? She went crazy, kind of yeah. like Bad Bunny, Which huh? so good, too. It's like they came out of nowhere yeah. and just took yeah. the whole spotlight. That's crazy. But I feel like Carol G is like the female version of, of Bad Bunny. Like not exactly him, but... um. Like what he has brought in, you know, like the music and everything. Like she's like up there, yeah. just as big. You brought up, you got a minor in Chicano. No, what is it? Chicano Latino studies. I'm just curious to know what that entails. Like, what did they teach you? Like, what kind of um, teachings were there in Cal State LA? Like. Um, about so we mainly learned like <coughs> um, the history of Chicanos and. The United States, or mainly LA, we focus on like LA. Um, We learned um, like the struggles. Um, I remember I had to do a project on, um, I forgot what it's called, the fertilization, like the fertilizations Uh that had happened here. I believe it was at the USC um, Medical Hospital, the one that's right here off the 10, I believe. You know which one? Was it on? It's not an Olympic, right? No, you're talking about General Hospital. I think it was on, I don't yeah, know, yeah. but I had to do a project on that. Mm-hmm. And basically, like, these doctors would sterilize or um, the, is it sterilize? The sterilization? Fertiliz- I think so. I, I don't forgot b- the name, but where they would they would have a baby and then they would um, snip their, their, they would tie their tubes so what? they wouldn't have kids. These um, Latina women, Hispanic women. The doctors, like, I guess, like, this was a big thing that was, like, going on where they would, like, tie their tubes without them knowing or since they were um, Hispanic and a lot of them didn't speak English, um, they couldn't read the forms right. So uh, the translators would, like, just say, oh, just sign here. Or, like, there's a medication that you need or something, you know, so, like something that was going to benefit them. And um At the end, they ended up tying their tubes without them knowing. And there was like this huge uh, lawsuit, but it was like super messed up. I didn't didn't even know that happened. Yeah. So maybe I need to educate myself. Yeah. But yeah, we learned a lot about like histories like that, struggles. And then we also learned about like the new stuff like Chicanx, Latinx. They were teaching that? Yeah. Yeah, we learned about that. Hmm. What do you think about that? Like all those terms. I mean, to each their own. Like, I'm not going to tell you what, if yeah. you should be he, she, them, they. Oh, that's what um, Latinx means, huh? Yeah. It's like not putting a label on, not putting a label on like a person. Like, 
let's say if you identify as they them i'm not gonna say you're latino latina you're latinx mm. yeah i asked bobby soto that question like like the, i mean we are the biggest group mm -hmm. like the like the latino group and it's like all these names and all these yeah. just like subcategories and it's like huh it's crazy like yeah. we're we're latinos you uh -huh. know but it's like to me it's like it does create division but everybody's entitled to call themselves what they want yeah so yeah i'm just uh I was just curious to yeah. see. What but honestly, I loved learning about, um, like, everything with, like, Chicanos and Latinos. Um, and I had an amazing, amazing teachers that would teach us all this history, too, that I got really close to. I still have one of my teachers on Instagram, too. Oh, is, man. Cause she's ama an amazing professor. That's pretty dope. Because when we were going to school, we didn't have yeah. Instagram. We didn't have none of that. Listen, and she's the I'm only old. professor from um, Cal State LA that, like, I kind of got to know, and I have her on social media. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Well, I hope she listens to the whole episode. Yes. Boom. <laughs> so then fast forward, you graduate, everything's dope. How do you secure brand deals? Like, do these people just reach out to you because of your influence, uh -huh. or do you reach out to them? Um. So... I feel like it kind of goes both ways. Um, let's say if there's a company that I really want to work with, I'm going to message them like, hey, like, are you um, accepting collaborations at the moment? If so, like, can I get more information? Or they would reach out to me like, hey, we want to collaborate with you. This is our um, what we want. This is a price. Do you agree? And then we start negotiating on what I can do, what I can't do, what, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. At what point do you say, hmm, I need a manager? I honestly really wanted a manager, but at the time, well, now, like, I would want a manager to kind of, like, get these brand deals for me. But at the time when it was, like, um, when I was, like, barely getting into this, I didn't know about that, you know? Like, mm -hmm. no one's going to tell me this is what you need, or you know? Like, I was doing everything on my own, so I kind of wish I did have a manager at the time. Um, but some, you don't know, some people can be like, um, not a scam, but like not legit, you know? So you just always have to be careful with that too. Absolutely. You have to know who's yeah. going to be representing you. Yeah. Yesterday we were at an event and one of the panelists was like thanking her manager and, I, and yeah. I'm kind of like. I think the same like you. Like I'm like, hmm. I don't know. It's hard to be trust. It's 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 hard to trust people, right? But this individual that was on the panel, she was like, man, my manager made it happen for me. Mm -hmm. She's like pushing for us because she understands my brand yeah. and she understands this and that. And I was just like, oh shit. Okay, cool. That's why I asked. I'm like, I don't know. Maybe next event with the sour apple sour apple event. Then you guys, uh, I'll invite you guys. So you guys can go. Yeah. Like meet these people. Connections like. are a big thing too. Because <coughs> sometimes I get invited to like events and I tell Ryan, come on, Ryan, let's go. And he's like more not as social or I wouldn't say not as social because he is social, but like. He's a guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> We're all like, the same. Like, ah, we're not yeah, trying to go. But. Yeah. Um, so I feel like sometimes he gets like too shy to come to these events with me, but I'm like, no, like this would also be good for him because he could tattoo like some of the husbands or whatever of yeah. these big super big influencers you know so i always tell him like to come with me because networking is like a good yeah yesterday um rock and roll g was there he was he was on a panel valentino was there uh what is that other uh she goes by pero anoche oh yeah she was there and her husband uh -huh and uh and she's pregnant right now super so ego cute. yeah they were just right there yeah she's the one shout out pero noche she's the one that spoke very highly of her manager yeah you need to be in that like for real yeah. and that was only by invite only but next time mm -hmm. then you guys will be my plus two <laughs>
You know? Yeah. You don't lose nothing. Yeah. Like, if they're going to get you a big-ass brand deal, look, this I'm new to all this, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like the old school guy, right? You know? But I'll just be like, God, what? How much? How much you make? God. Bro, like, I want that. Yeah. You know? like. And my cousin, too, she worked for a... um. So, what are they called? Um, PR, like a PR oh, thing PR. like that. Uh -huh. She worked for something like that too. And then she would tell me that some of the influencers that were on mm -hmm. her listing, they'd be making like 20K per thing. I'm like, dang. Oh, man. I, man, some of them were like 40, 50K. Yeah. And I'm just like, now you caught my attention. Yeah. Like, that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you have the influence. You have the following. Yeah. But I just need, like, the manager. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So, yeah. you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to have to introduce you guys to some of these people. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Like, yeah. you need, you have the platforms. Might as well take advantage of it. Yeah. So then, aside, so do you guys really don't attend, like, influencer events? Well, we have one coming up this I believe this week. Okay. Yeah. Go. Make sure he goes. Yeah. He better come. No excuses, bro. Because this, this. You know? Oh, <laughs> as Nair in the background. Yeah. The La People. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's known by like everybody. Now every time I hear that song, I just wouldn't be like, what song is that? La People. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? That shit like was dramatic, I bro. Know. <laughs> well, he's, he was like this. That shit was like, oh, fuck. That was some mafia shit right there. <laughs> Somebody, people are going to think that now. Mm -hmm. Somebody commented, bro was the first person to hear La People with a crying emoji. <laughs> he's like, damn, bro, just make this shit. No, like, I want to watch. He, he freaking listened to the Carol G song, too. First. No way. Yeah, What's before it dropped uh, the Culona. Um, with Peso Pluma and Karo G. You gotta say it the way I asked him. What's the name of the song? What's the name of the song? So you gotta do it with the sideways look. Kulona. What's the name of the song? I'm just kidding. Kulona. <laughs> What's the name of the song? That's really a song? Yeah. yeah. Social media could be toxic, right? Yeah. How do you deal with that? Um, I mean, at first, I didn't really have tough skin. But, I mean, I did have tough skin because I grew up with four brothers making yeah. fun of me doing all these fregaderas to me um so i kind of did have that tough skin but i didn't know how to take it from other people if that makes sense like yeah. my instagram started going up and i started getting hate messages like oh you look like this or you look like that why is your blah 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 like that you know like just physically talking <laughs> down on you and i just didn't know how to take that at first but now i'm just like Whatever. Sometimes I be I me pongo de cabrona and I be responding back to them. <laughs> yeah, like no que no cabrona, no que no. Like and once I say something, they don't say anything back because yeah, they know uh, like they messed up. I'm guilty of that. Like I literally just had a girl message me on. It wasn't even anything that had to do with Carol G. It was a picture of me and my niece on my story, and she responded saying, "Oh, you're such a childish fan." Posting Carol G all the time, like, oh, fuck, I forgot what else she said. But she was telling me things like that, like, pareces, uh, oh, que le andas mamando el And then I was, I responded back to her. I'm like, what the hell? She's really going to say that? And I said, well, si, si le mamo el, you know? Uh, like, girl, don't be, I don't know. And she didn't respond after that. I told her, if you really don't like it, why do you follow me? Like, it doesn't make sense to me, like, for someone to talk bad to you like if you simply don't like it unfollow me i'm not everyone's cup of tea and that's fine like i'm okay with that you don't have to follow me you know that's, you know what but you're right like if it bothers you so much unfollow Hi. me like yeah. what the fuck is a big deal <laughs> like there's no need to throw shade at people like that yeah because like that's mean girl energy like girl you're grown as hell why are you telling me that you know and it wasn't even, it had didn't have to do with Karol G. It was me and my niece. Like, my niece is only seven months old. Like, come on. But it's the internet. Yeah, the internet. You, you ain't the only one. it's a toxic place. You ain't the only yeah. one. 
So, but it's like I think that we focus on the negative. Yeah. yeah. Damn, there's all the positive. But there's there's a lot of really nice people and people yeah. that follow me and support me for me, you know, and yeah. Yeah, and I think you shouldn't focus on on. It's easier said than done. Yeah. Whoever says that it doesn't. Sometimes it does bother yeah. you. Yeah. But it, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it is hard because someone is telling you something, you know, like, and it is going to bother you. It is going to, but you just have to like kind of brush it off, you know? You know what the most annoying thing about somebody talking shit on Instagram is? What? It's when they're private oh. and they're nice and secure. Some motherfucker on yeah. there told me, what's your obsession with uh, private accounts, dog? I'm just fucking saying this. You want to see what I look like so you can retaliate? Uh, yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> like, that's exactly why. Like, bro, like, you fucking, you yeah, know. Don't be I, talking shit you know, when like, you're looking you can't, like that. It's like throwing rocks at somebody, yeah. but you're, like, sheltered. Wait, tell them about the time that you replied to a kid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know he was in high school. <clears throat> he was talking shit, too, about one of my guests, about him being overweight. Yeah. And then I was just like, hey, bro, like, it's cool, brother. I get it. And he's like, nah, fucking fat piece of shit. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and then I, I was like, hey, bro. I said, get out the, yeah, I said some, get out the homie shit, dog. And then like, bro. And then he reposted on his story. So then I'm like, I went out there and I started talking shit. And he's like, hey, bro, I'm just in high school, dog. And I was like, like you're a grown ass man. <laughs> man. And I was but like. But at the same thing, it's like, why are you talking smack? Like, dog, like, you know, I didn't say nothing crazy. Like, 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 no I was just like. Bro, leave him alone. Yeah. Like, there's no need to do... You're doing extra shit. Yeah. And then he deleted it, and I was just like, it's all good, like... <laughs> but Like, what's that saying? Don't play with fire if you can't take the heat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just feel like if you're going to talk shit, then have your shit open and so people yeah. can scroll on. You can't talk shit and then expect people not to talk or shit back. Or fake accounts, too. They're they all don't fake. even have, like, yeah. nothing on there. But then again... That was my mistake because it takes energy from me yeah. to do that. So yeah, it's like, so what? Fuck Ryan it. tells it me too, like, dude, just block them. <coughs> leave it alone. Just block them. But at the same He's time, right. like, yeah, I think that's right too. But at the same time, there's something in you that's like scratching you like the little devil on your shoulder. Like, reply back, reply back, reply back. Yeah. I had, I did reply to one, to one dude and I'm like, I said, get the fuck out of here or some shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then this fool's like, see, fool, you're not fucking famous, or else you wouldn't have responded. <laughs> he said that? He said that. And I'm like, you're all, oh. all right, <laughs> no response. <laughs> like, I didn't even know how to, how, do you, how the fuck do you respond to that? <laughs> uh, she got to go, gotta go through on Instagram. People want to. They peop- always want you to, to but, get, so, they want to get something out of you. Yeah. So, yeah. But what people don't understand like on the internet, people that are trying to build their brands, people that are trying to build their businesses, is that like, I want all these followers. Well, it comes with a lot. Yeah. You're gonna, it's gonna come with a bunch of bullshit, people fucking attacking your character and attacking, you know, like, like talking shit about your appearance. You're like, damn, fool, am I that <laughs> ugly fool? Like, you know? <laughs> but you have to just ignore it and just yeah. keep pushing. Shit. So, yeah. That's on the haters. So, you transition to doing, like, the micro... Um, what is it called? No, not micro No, no, I'm sorry. I said the wrong thing. It's called ombre powder, ta- ombre powder eyebrow tattoo. So, now that you're running your business, yeah. like, what's that experience like? I love it, honestly. Like, like I said, I didn't know I would love it this much when I first started, but it's therapeutic to me now. And, like, now I know why Ryan loves tattooing so much. Because, basically, let's say if you're... Because, I mean, we all get sad, depressed, whatever, mm-hmm. or we get stressed out. You're Once you're in the zone, like, tattooing or whatever, you're just focused on not fucking up someone's eyebrows. I mean, it's on their face. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, that's I a mean, good strategy. Thing, that's a good thing, strategy. Same thing with Ryan. I'm pretty sure he's just focused on not messing up the tattoo and just focus on getting <laughs> it right. And so your, your mind is just there. And so you don't think about, well, what going on outside of this or that you know um so i feel like it's a it helps me like it's therapeutic for me that's good yeah that's and really good. i've been getting like more and more clients i only started 
three months ago. I started in August. So a couple months ago I started, but I it's been going good. I really love it and I enjoy it. And I feel like when you love something and you enjoy it, you kind of get better at it quicker or you just put your all into it more. Mm-hmm. So you see that like, you know. And your main source of promoting the business is Instagram. Yeah, my Instagram. That's crazy, yeah. I mean, it, get, it does get hard because not everyone follows me to see the eyebrows. They didn't follow me for that in the first place, you know? Um, so kind of bringing that into my page as well, it's kind of like, I mean, I have my own separate page for it, but okay. just like kind of like promoting myself on my page, I like it's been a little bit hard because like I said, not everyone wants to see the eyebrows. Um, so yeah, I but, pushed and pushed to promote but myself. But like the ones... <clears throat> but like the ones that do mm-hmm. want to see that they'll funnel themselves into yeah, that account yeah so those are essentially the people that you really do want yeah because they're like oh, okay well Alexis does yeah. this and which is good because a lot of the well I feel like all of the girls that the, all the people that follow me on the account are just girls which is good because word of mouth is like the best promotion I feel also mm-hmm. like someone told me that they um they found me when I was doing their eyebrows. They found me because um, someone had said that they knew someone that does eyebrows. No, like, I oh, I follow this girl that does them. You should go to her. And that's how they came to me. But they don't even, they don't follow. Like a lot of these clients that I have, they don't even know who I am, like on Instagram. No that way. Makes sense. Yeah. Because they found me through my eyebrow page or through someone else, which is good. And I like it because... I get there and like they don't they don't know me for the Instagram Alexis. They know me for like eyebrows, you know? So then on on the business one, you, you don't have your personal like your personal account on your bio and Yeah, stuff like I that? do I do have it on there, but I mean some people don't and they just yeah. don't. Yeah. But I like I kinda like it. It's probably better, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. So like that, they're just like, oh, okay, I'm just gonna get my eyebrows done. Yeah. With Alexis. Yeah. Uh, With this normal girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. And how does it feel to be your own boss? I mean, now that you know you have your degrees, you you always have that option yeah. to go get a regular nine to five. Yeah. But like, how does it feel to like just run your own show, run your own schedule, you know? And what challenges have have you? have encountered i feel like um i was kind of already used to that because i had took on social media full time so i was kind of used to like having my own schedule but now it's just more because i i kind of love having a lot of my plate at the same time because when i was going to school i was going to school i was modeling i was doing instagram and i was working my nine to five like i was doing all of that so when i stopped going to school because i got my degree it was just like the remaining and then i stopped working so it was just modeling and instagram so that was like all of my time so i kind of felt like i needed i i needed that push or like that hustle to um want to do more and so when i didn't have nothing you know like like okay when we got the house i was basically like a stay-at-home um girlfriend cleaning the house cooking and then well, I would we'll like get to the cooking. Yeah, <laughs> modeling well, I got and all. About that. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, modeling and all of that. So I was like focused on that. But I mean, I kind of like since I was farther away from my parents, I lived with my parents my whole life, you know, so not being with my parents, anyone's going to get depressed, you know, anyone's mm-hmm. going to get sad for just not even being with their parents. You know, I feel like we all go through that, especially Absolutely. when it's the first time, like being away from your family and so there's just like a lot of times where i just be home i mean ryan would be working i'd be home by myself yeah i would go to marshall's home (laughs) goods all this stuff to like kind of distress myself and go to the gym but it's not the same like just being home by yourself i mean i was with my dogs but still it was like at the end of the day i didn't have a physical person to talk to because i was home alone you know so all these stress comes to your head and you know so taking an, on like another thing which is like the tattooing has helped me a lot and it has helped me to manage my time better um it's helped me like just to create a routine that 
I like love now because now I go to the gym I still do modeling I still do Instagram and I do my clients and then I still get home I either go to the gym or cook or you know maybe because you feel like hey I have a purpose yeah. it's like a, on a daily basis yeah because I feel when I I tell Sabrina this I feel like I need to earn the right to be home. Mm -hmm. and, and she's like trying to understand how this yeah. in mind works. So I kind of feel what you're saying because when I stay home and I don't do shit. You feel like not I'm, motivated. No, huh? como que me oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, fuck, like something's I have missing. I do something, huh? Like, like yeah. damn. And then Sabrina's like, you always like, want to be on the go. So then, like for me, I don't like being at home. And like, I love being home. I mean, I do, but siempre me, me gusta andar en la calle, like freaking grocery shopping, something. I have to be doing something. Like if I'm home for like too long, I feel like, oh, like I need to go somewhere, you know? See, I like to be home after being at the office. Yeah. I feel like, well, maybe for me, and I, I'm, this is a, a man's point of view. Uh -huh. This is how I process things, so don't fucking get mad. <laughs> it's like I feel I need to, I'm a provider yeah. to my family. Yeah. I'm like the, I need to work i need to provide and then i feel like when i get home like oh, you enjoy it my kids yeah and i enjoy it yeah. so he's smiling because i think he thinks the same way yeah like and it's not even fucking being a workaholic i'm not saying i got yeah i'm well i kind of am a little bit but that that's why mm -hmm. because i feel like you're a hustler yes i hustle like my whole life i've been like that yeah you know i fucking you know, was knocking on doors at 12, selling newspapers. Yeah. Like, I need to be productive. I'm a provider. So, yeah. you know, and when I don't, I don't know what the fuck to do with myself. Like, you don't you don't feel motivated. You don't no. feel like, like you feel like you need some. And that's how I felt, like, being at home. I mean, just doing Instagram um, at my mom's house. Like, I was just only doing Instagram and modeling. Mm -hmm. It was different because I was with my mom. I was with my family, people who, like, you know. Um, but then once we move in together, I mean, I have Ryan. I love Ryan. I love talking to him. But at the end of the day, he was always, like, working because, I mean, a tattoo doesn't take two hours to do. Sometimes it'd be sure. taking, like, eight hours, you know? Yeah. And that whole morning until he got home, like, I would just be alone going walking around at Marshall's or whatever. <laughs> but it was, like... Oh, shopping. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> have friends where we moved to, you know? It's, like... I don't know anyone in this new place. Like, I don't have no one to really talk to out there, you know? So it was, like, kind of hard for me. And now that you bring up friends, mm -hmm. I'm sure that in your group of friends, you might be the only one that well, that honestly, is doing... I don't really have friends. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> but... I mean, I have, like, one really good friend. Um, but everyone else, like, yeah, they're my friends but i wouldn't consider them like my tight tight so, like my tight thing is my friend carmen and my cousin so carmen and your cousin do yeah. they have regular jobs um yeah regular like it's like not it's, right i, I don't no, mean like no. you know like <laughs> no. do, do, do they have like their nine to fives like yeah so it's completely different to what you do uh -huh. right so I mean, it, Carmen, she owns her own business, too. Though. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. it's, it's kind of... Yeah, she owns her own business, so she kind of can do... Yeah, because I, I just have that, you know, that question is, like, do they ever say, like, oh, like, like, what do you do? Like, all you do is, like, post videos and, like, you know, Well, I mean, now that I have, now that I have, like, my eyebrow page, I mm -hmm. feel like I'm kind of, like, the same as them. Like, I don't see, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, because I... Every now and then that I talk to some of my... Some of my friends are like, oh, bro, like, to talk to you, dog, I have to, like, book an appointment to be on your podcast. I'm like, dog, you think that's all I do every day, all day? Mm -hmm. Like, no, it's, like, once a week. <laughs> like, you know, like, yeah. so I don't think they understand how this works and stuff like that. That's why I was yeah. just curious to see if any of your friends would No, be like, I feel like back then when I was only doing, like, just Instagram, when I was still living with my mom, um, it would be, like, Sometimes I tell my cousin, hey, let's go here or there. Oh, sorry, I'm working. I'm like, oh, fuck, I forget. Like, I forget sometimes. Like, like, oh, she, your, your cousin was like, it's my lunchtime. <laughs> like, what are you doing at 12? <laughs> oh, shit, I think I got makeup on. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. 
Dude, imagine like, oh man, that's that's funny. So, when you f- bought your house, congratulations! Thank you. And I heard you had the best agent ever. Yes, but, you had the best agent you know, ever. Uh, God. <laughs> when you left your parents' house, how uh-huh. difficult was that? Because you were you're you're really young. Yeah. And it remind me of my sister. So you guys are like super young. She just moved out too. So it's like. She's been with my parents the whole, like, yeah. since she's, you know, yeah. since birth. So it's like, how hard was that transition? Super hard. <laughs> like, s- extremely hard. Because, one, my mom didn't want me to leave. I mean, what mom wants their child to leave their house? And I would be the first one. So I have three older brothers, and then it's me, and then my little brother. Okay. So these three older brothers who are overprotective, you know, none of them moved out. And I'm the third, the fourth child, and I'm moving out. And I'm the girl. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. They they all still live there? No, 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 not anymore. Okay, I was no, like, no, oh, but as shit, when we moved that's out. a big deal then. No, when, when I moved out. So we're, I'm telling you, we were, like, super tight, you know? So that's why it was so hard, it, like, extremely hard, like, I'm the little girl, you know. They see me as the the baby. I mean, I have my little brother, but the girl, the girl. Like, they see me as this, you know. I don't know. Because you're the younger yeah, sibling. the like, younger sibling. You have male. Only girl. Like, you have brothers. I grew up with just boys. Oh, that must You know, so my wrong. mom, no, te me casas primero. And, you know, she didn't want me to leave mm-hmm. before. And I want to get married. I Hint, hint. Hint, hint. I want to get married, you know? Um, But when we bought the house, it was just like, no, let's buy the house. Like, it was like something we both really wanted. Um, So then when we talked to my, first we talked to my dad because my mom's the scary girl. (laughs) No, she's the the one we got to be scared of. So she's the the enforcer. Not the dad, yeah. Oh, shit, no way. It's the opposite over here. Met with us. Yeah, and so um, when... When um, we told my dad, like Ryan pulled my dad to the outside in the back, and I know he was nervous because he talked to him on on by himself, and I was I I knew they were talking, and my mom was in the in her room, and I was in her restroom because the restrooms like open to her room, and I was peeking from the window <laughs> outside to where he was talking to my dad. I'm like, fuck, he's talking to my dad, and my mom didn't know what they were talking about or anything, and I was just in there like being. And so my dad, um, my dad, I went, I ended up going out to the back and my dad said like, you know what, if this is going to make you happy, like I support you guys and I agree with you guys, just, you know, take care of my daughter, you know, if this is what you guys really want. And when we told my mom, it was, nope, that's not happening. Nope. Cause she wanted me to get married and she, like, I feel like it was just so hard. Oh my God. You know, I didn't know this. Um, so moving was like so then she said no you have to be married mm-hmm. because it's tradition like yeah. mexican tradition right yeah. so how did you convince her i didn't i just did it <laughs> oh which was thug even, life. yeah i just started grabbing my well okay we had told them once we were already in escrow and all of that because we didn't want to tell them not oh, shit. So they didn't know when we were talking to you about this whole house thing. They didn't know until uh, it was legit. We didn't want to tell them and for it not to be legit for us not to have the house, you know. So we did it right when we were like in escrow or maybe like a week or two before even getting the house. We had told them they don't have long. OK, so then I hope they don't be like, oh, the beachy road trading fucking, <laughs> you know, like, oh, I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> Uh, ma'am, ma'am, I had nothing to do with this. <laughs> no, I, I mean, so, everything's good now. So I'm still like tripping out like you're in escrow. Yeah. And you still hadn't. We hadn't told. I think it was like a week or a week and a half before even getting the keys. Because we were too. I, no, I was scared because he's like, come on, let's tell your parents and this and that. And I was the one that was scared, like, oh, like, how am I going to tell them? How are my brothers going to react? So first I told my older brothers. I told them before anything. And what they say? They're like, oh, well, I mean, I guess <laughs> if you want to do it, you know, 
because they they love Ryan, you know, they're good friends with him and everything. So they're we all hang out together. So they were just like, I mean, I guess <laughs> like they didn't they didn't have <sighs> nothing to say. That what were they gonna say? No, you can't. Oh, man. Yeah. So I so, told them first. Yeah. So then. I give you your keys. Mm-hmm. My you mom just the went day we, and packed your stuff? No, okay. So the day we got the keys, my mom did not know we were going to get the keys. We woke up early and my mom said, ¿A dónde vas? Oh, con Ryan, vamos a ir a comer. And it was like 8 in the morning, right? Like, yeah, it, was early, it was early. Early. We go, we get the keys. And I, the way I told my mom that we got the keys was in our family group chat with me and my brothers and her. Um... I just send her a picture, like the picture we took of like welcome home. Oh, <laughs> that made it look all nice. <laughs> and oh, okay, and then <laughs> so I send that picture, and yeah, it was just from there that weekend we had a welcoming party, and she came over, and my parents came, everyone came over. She was still like upset about it, but I mean, we already had the house, like okay. But you didn't, like, go pack your stuff right away. No, no, no. We, so we got the house in October. We didn't fully move in till like, November, December. Like, the end of November, beginning of December. So, like, mid-November, I was taking my stuff little by little, packed my, my clothes. Like, because all my clothes I had it in my closet hanging. Uh-huh. So I just grabbed it, would take some in my car. The next day, take some in my car. And... And um, they didn't know we were going to move in right away because the like our the house was really nice, but we wanted to remodel it and do everything, you know. So my mom didn't know we were moving in like ASAP. Mm-hmm. So um, I would always be going to the house like almost every day. And I'd just be like, oh, they're remodeling, they're remodeling. But I feel like she, I don't know, she didn't, it didn't re- really click in her head. Like it probably didn't register. Yeah, until it didn't like register until like she's seen me like fully moving my stuff. Because I remember when I wanted to take my vanity. I mean, my vanity's big. I needed my dad's help. Um, my dad helped me move it in, and my mom. I just remember her saying like, "¿Qué estás haciendo? Like, no que se iban a mover después. Like, you know, like she still thought like we were gonna like get married and then move in. You know, <sighs> traditions. Yeah. Because, I mean, she grew up super traditional. My grandpa, like, you know, like, super, super traditional. My grandpa was very hard on her, too, um, with, like, guys and all that. But then again, my dad was her neighbor. That's crazy, huh, growing up? (laughs) Wait, wait, wait. (laughs) (laughs) So they were neighbors? Yeah, my dad and my mom were neighbors. Well, oh, shit. well so my dad had came from Mexico and he stayed at his sister's house, which mm-hmm. happened to be the house next to where my mom. What part of Mexico? My dad is from Guanajuato and my mom is from Zacatecas. Oh, shit. Yeah. So then your dad moved to. To East L.A. To East L.A. Oh, so they met here yeah. in the States. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right. And then he met her. He fell in love and he married her right yeah. away. Yeah. But I feel like it was hard for her to imagine being the neighbor and then have to sneak around my grandpa and my <laughs> grandpa was ooh. Oh, so they moved like her like your grandparents, yeah, everybody yeah. moved there. Yeah, yeah. So you're second generation. Because oh no, you're still first because they were born over there. Yeah, they were born. Okay, out okay, there. okay. They just well, moved. Yeah, they here. just moved down here. Yeah, my mom was born out there and Okay. Wow. So yeah. that must have been like She's like, no, te me casas. It's yeah. the only way. Mm-hmm. And I think it's tradition. So she was probably like, oh, man. And how and how is it now? Now it's amazing. Like, she loves Ryan. Because at the time, it, there was a tension because of the move. Like, you know, Ryan's taking away her princess, you know. So it was like, there was tension there. Because she didn't want me to move. And she, in her head, Ryan's basically stealing me from the home. Me está robando, you know? So. Fucking Ryan. (laughs) No, but now everything's good. Like, they love each Uh, other. Everything's amazing. So, now you brought up your mother. Is your mother the one responsible for all the stuff you cook? 
Yeah. Because damn girl, <laughs> that shit be looking fire. Yeah. Like she taught you how to make okay, explain. You make uh you know I'd be sending that shit to Sabrina, yeah. right? Yeah. Like hey You I, you asked me for the recipe. Yeah, I'm time. like, nah, that shit look bomb. Like yeah. she taught you how to make all that from scratch? Yeah, well so when I lived at my parents' house, I didn't know how to cook nothing besides a huevo estrellado and <laughs> Quesadillas, a sandwich. I still sandwich. I still una tuna. Uh, That's all I knew. So when I moved in with Ryan, it was hard because I didn't know how to make rice. I didn't know how to do anything. And get my phone. Mom, ¿cómo se hace esto? Mom. Whoa, whoa, whoa. ¿Y qué le echas a esto? And my rice, I couldn't get my rice down. Sometimes it would be hard and it was, it was kind of tough, but little by little, she would tell me like i would call her oh pues ya te dije la receta you know write it down and i'm just like well it's because like you know i would call her because sometimes she would forget like an ingredient and i'm like no i want it to come out exactly how you do it don't tell me how i should do it tell me how you do it you know and so um she would tell me her recipes and i'm like sometimes i would call her or i would facetime her does it look ready like do i take it you know <laughs> yeah, oh but, man enchiladas rojas verdes de mole the her mole is bomb and i got her recipe down so i'm proud of that um do you make enchiladas de mole yeah yeah so the same oh, sauce yeah. i just save a whenever i make mole i save a little bit of the mole to make the enchiladas like during the week or something Dang. yeah and then pozole everything Girl, you've been making some bomb ass shit. I've been mm -hmm. like, God damn, man, Ryan eating good over there. <laughs> like, Sabrina, step your game up. That should be looking bomb. No, but recently I haven't cooked like that anymore. It's been like maybe like two to three months that I haven't cooked like bomb like that because Why? I'm like trying to be fit. It's hard. And it's hard, it's, yeah. It's the hardest shit. Yeah. I lost a couple pounds and I'm just like, fuck, I kind of give up. I want to eat. Yeah. But no. It's, it's hard. Like, I seen one of the episodes. I looked, I was like almost 250. I was like, I never, but I blame it because Sabrina was pregnant. Yeah. So every time, you know, I have three kids. So mm -hmm. every time I gain weight and I'm just like, all right. So now I'm down to like 232. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, eating is good, but yeah, I'd rather be fit. It's just hard, though. Mm -hmm. It it really is hard. And honestly, what really pushed me, because I model for this um, gym, like, boutique company. Um, they sell, like, gym clothes. It's called Shop Peachy Buns. Um, so I model for them. And one day, someone commented on one of the pictures and put, why do you guys put her as a model if she doesn't go to the gym? But I would go to the gym. Like, mm -hmm. I would go but not as much as I go now, but I would go to the gym. And so they put, why do you put her if she doesn't go to the gym as much? And to me, I was like, dang, but I do go to the gym, you know, like, uh, and then I'm like, no, maybe I should go hard. Like that pushed me to go harder and be more fit. Like sometimes when someone tells you something, like it's, it pushes you to do more Absolutely. and be better, you know? So to me, like uh, it pushed me and now I'm like super into the gym, super into, like, cooking healthy and everything. No wonder I don't see no enchiladas no more. I know. But that's really good, though, because eating will fuck everything up. Yeah. Like, you could go to the gym every day, and it's, I blame this for right here. He be trying to get me to go eat some nasty shit sometimes. And I'm just like. For lunch? Yeah, like, you know. And it's, it's, it's his fault. But. Sabrina told me you eat pizza at home. Fridays only. Fridays. Fridays only. <laughs> <clears throat> but I think if it wasn't for. I'm trying to control that. Yeah. And then I start losing weight. But it's just hard. It, it is really hard. And I even tell Ryan to like. I'm sorry that you're not going to be eating good. But. <laughs> you know. I'm trying to cook healthy. Um, and also another thing is like, um, being healthy just for your overall health, you know, like, cause I think about it, like I want to be like 50 years, years old and not have like diabetes, cholesterol, all these like, like health issues, you know, like, and so the food is the main thing of why people get heart disease and 
all these cholesterol. I mean, I don't even know what cholesterol means, but. Me neither. Huh? Actually, <laughs> we Googled it, didn't we? Yeah, but they're saying that chole- we need cholesterol. Yeah, but the good cholesterol. Yeah, but <laughs> I mean, not. I mean, anything in excess is bad, I guess. So yeah, not too much, but. But ha- yeah, I feel like just being healthy for your overall health in the long run is going to be better. Do you feel that being in better shape attribute or or being in better shape helps with? Uh, your mindset and like your mental health? Honestly, I feel like it does because I mean, we're our biggest critic at the end of the day too. When you look in the mirror, it's like, you're the only one that's telling yourself like, Hey, like I look this way or that way, you know, like I should fix it or, um, but it it helps relieve stress too. Like whenever you go to the gym. So it I feel like it does help your mental health a lot. I think it does. I think when you feel great, you do great. You and you, yeah. Yeah, and and I see, like the I, result. I see when I'm not super hitting it hard, yeah. like when I'm going to the gym eating healthy, and I see how productive I am. Mm-hmm. And and when I fall off, I see the results. Like you like, don't get motivated, and, like and it, it all feel, ties together too with yeah. your work, with everything. Yeah, absolutely. So, and I think so. Then you would say that. The way, the best way that you deal with stress is like the gym? I mean, yeah, the gym and work. Focusing on not messing up someone's (laughs) brows. No, but honestly, I love to to talk to my clients. I feel like that's kind of also therapeutic because they talk to me about their problems and I talk to them. Not about my problems, but like we kind of like. It's like you're bouncing off ideas off of each other. And it's, I feel like, barbers, tattoo artists. Yeah. Like, people that, you know, like, people that do, like, uh, eyebrows and and, and beauty. It's like, they're that. Yeah. And they're a therapist. Yeah. Because I used to go to my nail girl and we'd talk about all this stuff. Or even when I used to get my lashes done, we'd be talking until you fall asleep. But, because we'd be falling asleep, getting your lashes done. Even girls that I do their eyebrows, they fall asleep on me too. Do they snore? No. (laughs) Because I mean, they're getting a tattoo. They're they're half asleep. (laughs) Yeah, I think uh, like my barber, he's the first one uh, that 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 knew that knew about the name. I was like, I'm gonna name it True Hustle, bro. He's like, Oh, that shit sounds dope, bro. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, For real, it does sound dope. He's like, That shit sounds fucking dope. It's like, shit, I bought the domain yesterday, bro. And then <laughs> I register it and all that shit. Yeah, so. yeah, because even when I would get my nails done, a lot of, well, back in the, back then, mm-hmm. when I was barely starting social media, my nail tech kind of knew to when I was, like, starting. Because I would, like, I mean, I would see her, like, every two weeks, you know? So I would mm-hmm. update her on the new things, the new collaborations, the new, you know? <laughs> no way. That's yeah. crazy. What advice would you give to a young girl? That wants to follow your footsteps and be a social media influencer and it is that wants to be a what is it like a fashion influencer yeah, or I like, do like mainly fashion yeah. um so like i said investing in yourself is like the best thing so just tagging all these um companies and even reaching out to them to messaging them it it's not going to hurt you to message them i still do it now with companies that i want to work with you know i message them like hey is there any collaborations open so you know just really um investing in yourself in that way and don't give up there's gonna be someone to open the door for you and if someone tells you no someone else is gonna tell you yes you know one door closes so another one can open so i feel like that's the best thing absolutely but i think people should not give up your right yeah no okay and if Keep it doesn't going. work for you, yeah, if it doesn't work for you, there's always going to be something, too, that is going to work for you. You have to find your, I believe it's called, I don't know how to pronounce it, niche. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to find, yeah, like, find what niche. what your, like, niche is. Like, for me, it's, like, fashion and a little bit of lifestyle, which is, like, um, showing your home yeah. and, all, you know, things like that. But it's mainly, mainly fashion. Yes. Because yeah. I know some people... 
they get um their niche of like um collecting things you know like collectibles or mm-hmm. there's different things some people's just cooking some people's just like um family page you know it's different for so everyone. like know exactly what you're gonna do basically mm-hmm. so know what you want you, or what like, you want your page to look like like identify mm-hmm. my page is gonna provide this type of service yeah. and i'm gonna do this and then you niche it down and say this this is the type of community and audience that I want to build that I'm going to cater to. Yeah. And then once you come up with that plan, then everything is pretty fairly easy, right? Yeah, because then like the follow the community you build kind of comes along and then your photo or post or reel will start coming out on other people who also like that stuff. I mean, that's why that's what it's called the like the tracking on the phone yeah. where they they start tracking what you they like listen. and what you like and don't like, and then mm-hmm. they start posting it. Like, if you click on your Explore page, it's mostly going to be everything you already like and watch. Damn. For example, on my Explore page for my eyebrow page, nothing but eyebrows, nothing but lashes and beauty. And then on my personal Instagram page, it's more like fashion and this boutique selling this, you know? That's so crazy. I feel like that's it's all the tracking stuff. So, yeah. It's just kind of scary that they track us. You know, they listen. Yeah. They listen. Yes. And it's like when you fucking go log on, I'm going to probably get lashes on my freaking yeah. feed. Yeah. When you talk about something, it just starts popping up. But also, like, I have Amazon Alexa, like the little speaker yeah. thing. And sometimes I'd be scared to say something because she listens. <laughs> she really listens. Alexa. I could, I could say, Alexa, and she'll turn on. And I'm like, dang, like, or I could be in the other room and say Alexa and it'll turn on. Fucking scary. Yeah. Because oh. at my beauty studio, um, it's kind of like their rooms, their rooms and everyone does different things. Mm. But um, some girl kind of two doors down across from me, she has an uh, Amazon Alexa, too. And sometimes she turns off hers or says Alexa pause or Alexa play this. And mine turns on. But she's like two rooms down. And, you know, so they listen. That's crazy. Any stories on, like, any craziness that is, has happened, in, like, on your page? Or, like, like from these random-ass accounts that just go fucking... What am I trying to say here? Um I know that Reverie shared a story that she had, like, this fucking stalker and shit. Uh-huh. And, like, you know, because he was stalking her and stuff like that. Like, you don't get shit like that? No, I don't. It's, like, kind of scary shit. Yeah, that's scary. That's super scary. It, but thank God I've never had anything like that. I mean, I do get creepy men and creepy men who send pictures that you do not want to see. <laughs> yeah. I do get what? things like that, but... I know, kind of know how already how to filter. I don't even open those messages anymore. Um, but yeah, there would be some really weird people on there. No, that's what I'm asking because mm-hmm. males. Okay, cool, whatever. You know, shit. Uh, you know, but it's like, you know, it's a little bit different for for women. Yeah. You know, because there's a bunch of fucking creeps out there. Yeah. They, like there is. This is the reality of it. And then when I hear stories from, like, our female guests, they're like, dude, this, that. And I'm just like, I just had to ask. And like, it's hard. Shit. It's hard, too, sometimes because you never know. They can they can be watching you. Like, I got a message from me and Ryan went to the mall yesterday. Hey, I saw you at the mall, at this mall. And it was a guy. And then I showed Ryan. I was like, look, this person saw us there. And it's, like, kind of creepy, but... <sighs> I had somebody like on, on TikTok, like, hey, bro, you go to this? No, it was, it was it was a girl. She was like, oh, I remember you from 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 Madhouse. And I was just like, oh, okay. And I'm just like, and I'm going to do it. I'm like, but she was super cool. I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. But it's like, you just imagine how yeah. you girls have it, you know? You guys are young, yeah. attractive. And, I mean, you know, it's weird if a guy tells me that, like, hey, I saw you this. But if a girl tells me that, it's different, too. 
because it's like, oh, like, you yeah. should have oh, said hi. Oh, so cute. We you should have took a picture with me. But if a guy's like, yeah. hey, yo, I seen you at motherfucker. Yeah, West Covina. Uh, like, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what does it mean, dog? Yeah, because yeah. I uh, the day of the Carol G concert, there's like a couple girls who saw me there too. And some came up to me and um, some messaged me that they saw me. So No way. Yeah, but it's not. It's not. It's not that. No, yeah, that's not. Cre- that's what I'm saying. It's, it's yeah, different yeah. when a girl tells you. You get all happy on like, yeah, that's <laughs> my girl. And then it's a dude. It's like, oh, fucking creep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any any products you want to promote? Anything? Any big brands that you're working with that you want to promote? Your business, no how to reach you, all that. <laughs> I'm like, no free promo. <laughs> <laughs> no free yeah. nothing. This shit ain't free. <laughs> Um, so my page is It's Negrete Babe. That's my personal page. And my eyebrow page, that's what I want to promote, my eyebrow page. Hell yeah, get it, So girl. if you need some eyebrows, I'm your girl. Um, my eyebrow page is Avanti Artistry. Avanti period artistry. And, yeah. And no free stuff, guys. And my email for, like, collaborations is It's Negrete Babe at gmail.com. But I was serious about inviting you guys to, to the next event. Yes, I'm down. Because I think uh, you need to get a manager. Mm-hmm. For real. Because some of these numbers that they throw out there, I just feel yeah. like, what the fuck? What? what? I don't have followers like Alexis, but I want <laughs> that type of check. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, fuck. But then like, again, too, I feel like I need to be also more active on like TikTok and YouTube, you know? But it's hard. It's so hard when, like, I don't know. It's hard. Just repurpose yeah. the videos. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, our TikTok started going crazy. Yeah. And it's just like I take the videos. The same and, videos. Yeah, and boom, post boom, them. boom. We might change a little something. Yeah. But I repurpose them. Yeah. You and already I, have the content. I, I used to do a little bit of YouTube, but then I kind of stopped. But I kind of want to get back into it because I honestly love, like, vlogging and Showing my day and what I'm doing. I, I seen some of the videos like, yesterday. I could literally vlogged this. Yes, you should have. Or done a real, like, hey, I'm going to you JR. You can still do it. Shit. You're gonna do, yeah, I would. I don't have behind the scenes clips. Uh. Oh, take take a little video so we can send it to her. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. But you should. Why not? I'm and then you could start funneling. Your, I just told Eric this yesterday. Uh-huh. Like funnel your Instagram to your YouTube. Yeah, because right now my YouTube are like Carol G concerts. I know, I seen it. <laughs> I was trying to get like more info. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, I know you guys, but it's like, hmm, I, I'm trying. I want to get, you know, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Carol G, oh, Carol G, oh, Carol G. <laughs> I was like, Dude, my, I had literally had my birthday party of Carol G too. I know, I seen it. Yeah, so that's crazy, but you like her shit. I fun fact. And you like America? Yeah, fun fact. You I'm know, a when, Chivas girl over here. Oh shit! All right, I'm gonna let you slide. <laughs> you know, Bone Thugs and Harmony. I'm sure you know of them, right? Maybe oh, song. F- of <laughs> old, bro. Oh, anyway. Cut that out. <laughs> Don't embarrass me. <laughs> uh, Bone Thugs and Harmony. All right. They're a big group, right? Back when we were growing up. Yeah. So Crazy Bone's first name is Anthony. That's what I named my son, Anthony. Yeah. I mean, Sister. I'm not going to name my daughter Carolina. But yeah, <laughs> that's what I was like. <laughs> Man, I can't even, you I know? mean, maybe a middle name. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's crazy. But... Yeah, I really appreciate you stopping by. Thank you, know, you. you know what I'm saying? I know you're busy and stuff. And I mean, too bad you're not cooking like that. I was going to say, hey, you better invite <laughs> us to fucking eat some enchiladas de mole. Mm-hmm. But maybe Dang, on I should have made some and brought you some. Hell coffee. yeah. yeah. So brought you on, a plate for Sabrina. T- on, on, on your cheat meal, I'll tell Sabrina, hey, we're going to roll over because we got to eat some of those. Yeah. But thank you and so much. You have to see the house. You haven't seen it, right? After no, the I haven't remodel. seen it. I was supposed to go to his birthday his birthday something happened that day and then it happened but hopefully i get to go there soon yeah and we can hang out cool i mean hopefully he takes a junior H and he's a, a private <laughs> okay. fucking a private you know when he posted that i'm like hey fool you could have just invited me dog. it was crazy how that happened too and that just happened organically yeah. right he just showed up and like then what do you just 
started playing. Well, he was, uh, Ryan was tattooing him. And then Ryan had like another little group of friends there that were like playing music. Mm -hmm. And then he just hopped on the mic and he started performing. And it was like, what the heck? Like, we literally have Junior H in our living room. And then Blue got famous too off it. You know who Blue is? Yeah. My dog. Yeah, your dog. So my dog, he got famous off it too on his Instagram page because Blue has an Instagram page. And (laughs) (laughs) so there is junior H like fanatics following blues account because on blues page, I posted pictures like, um, of him with junior H like junior H was holding him and another video where he was like holding him and all his like fanatics were following blues page. I'm like, Oh shit, blue. No way. (laughs) Yeah, It's crazy. And for that, he just got, I mean, you guys had music playing and he just got up on the mic and was like, all right, free concert. Yeah. And he sang, like, a couple songs, maybe, like, five songs. That's dope. Yeah. And then the following week, I think it was his concert, and we went to his concert. He, like, took us backstage and everything. It was pretty cool. No way. Yeah. That's fucking dope. That's what's up. Well, thank you so much. But he's a really cool dude, too. He seems like he's he's a really cool dude. Yeah, super humble. He seems, like, super, like, chill. Yeah. He's chill. I actually want to go to one of to like one of his concerts. I mean, we went to the Peso Pluma one, mm-hmm. and that fool was full of energy. Yeah, yeah, that guy's a he's at a different yeah. level. So I'm like, ah. I know Ryan took me to meet Peso Pluma too. One of the times he tattooed him, he took me. Oh hell yeah! Before we go, I want to hear that story. How was that? How was he though? He was. Um, I mean, everything was like cool. I got there because I had a flight that day. Um. And Ryan didn't want to take me. (laughs) He didn't want to take me to meet him. But my flight was the airport that I was going to. It was close to his like um, Mm -hmm. studio where he was recording. I'm like, Ryan, come on. Like I could literally Uber from the studio to the airport. It's going to be less than 10 minutes if I do that. Like just take me. No, like that's weird if i take you like i this is like he he thought it was not like professional you know Mm, because he was gonna go there to tattoo yeah okay i get it so he thought it was not professional i'm like okay but i'm just gonna be in and out you know like just take me okay fine let's go so he took me and then i was there maybe for like two hours until i had to leave to catch my flight but i met him i took a picture with him and it was cool i think that was the the day when la people no way <laughs> damn yeah. that's what's up well i think uh shit that one that must have been a pretty dope experience yeah it was pretty cool and then he gave us tickets too to his concert oh no we way. went to like two of them i think two or three i don't know i don't remember how much but we went he invited us to a couple how tall of is he concerts. like he's like oh he's tall is he's he tall. that's a pluma you met him i know but i don't remember like <laughs> he, he didn't seem that no, he was tall because in the picture I have with him, he like I looked really short. He's taller than Ryan. He ain't as tall as us though. I don't remember. He's probably a t- stand up. I'm six three. Yeah, he's probably as tall as him. Like no. six two, six one. La like people. There. La people. I just like saying that shit. People. Yeah, but once again, thank you so much for stopping by. We yeah. really appreciate you, thank and you I know. For um, me. I, I know this is gonna. This is it's, it's, this is gonna be dope, and I know you're gonna like it, and I know yeah. your fans are gonna like it too. Yeah. So, five seven? Five seven? No. I'm telling you, so. I'm he's telling tall, you. No, he's taller. Nah, I didn't see him. Nah, unless, nah. unless, cause he's skinny. No, but maybe I feel he like has he's, some he's botas not or some five shit. seven though. <laughs> five seven is kind of a little short, no? Dude, maybe he has some botas. <laughs> All right, cool. We're out. Okay, bye.